a stable door. <laughs> Thank you, Ruth. So, um, my name's Sarah Sherman. I work for a consortium of universities in the London area. Um, our six partners are Birkbeck, the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine, the Royal Veterinary College, SOAS, uh, UCL's Institute of Education and the University of London. And together, we do all sorts of things. We share software licenses, deals that I've negotiated with providers, some of whom are here today. Um, we do joint training. We provide joint uh, materials, training guides. I run lots of events, and we do stuff together because um, between us all, we're quite small institutions, and as one combined effort, um, we still are not the size of a, a normal-sized university. So the whole is greater than the sum of its parts is very much our motto. Um, so activity is based around an enhancement theme, which we pick every two or three years. So in 2014, we were looking at assessment and feedback practices. We collated lots of good examples across our partners uh, and shared that with the community. Um, the, uh, the next enhancement theme, which we started in 2016, uh, was digital capabilities, which is obviously what's brought us all here today. So we've done a lot of um, different activities as part of this uh, theme. We have designed a MOOC, an award-winning MOOC, I have to add that in, for teachers, any teachers who teach online, whether it's fully blended or uh, completely distance learning, um, and it teaches and, and trains them to uh, make their online courses engaging and interactive. It's on Coursera, it's three weeks long, it's free, uh, and that's the URL. Also, as part of this theme, we have run the JISC Student Digital Tracker Survey, um, and we've also trialled the staff uh, discovery tool. So the topic that I'm going to be talking to you about today uh, is our pre-enrolment course, which has come out of this same program. And um, it's a, a course to, uh, to kind of look, for, look at students before they start university. We're well aware of all the brilliant stuff that's out there, particularly a lot developed by JISC, on ensuring that students are equipped for entering the workplace to make sure they're digitally skilled and ready to get earning the bucks. But actually, we're wor we were worried in Bloomsbury if we were maybe doing a disservice to our students. Are we equipping them with the technologies that they need for their learning and in a way to, to get them before they even start? So um, it's still a, a, pre a work in progress. Um, but I wanted to, to sort of talk about the process and where we've got to right now. So we did some research across our six partners. We consulted with a number of colleagues uh, and we ran a couple of surveys with staff and students. Um, so in terms of the consultation, I report to a steering group, which is made up of a couple of senior representatives of each of the six partner institutions. So I talked to my advisory board, kind of my, my line managers, um, to make sure they were happy with what we were planning. Um, I also have a, um, a sort of a, a dispersed team of learning technologists. We call them the BLE Tell team. They knew what we were up to. Some of them were involved more heavily in the project. I have a digital capability advisory board, which again is representatives from all the institutions, but from different stakeholder groups. So we have librarians, staff development, um, a real life student. We have a number of different people on our board progressing through all of these different activities, um, some of which I've already mentioned. Um, but for this specific project, the, the pre-enrolment course, I have a working group. They don't have big muscles, but some of them like to think maybe they do, the PEC working group. So to kick off, so we had a couple of, we ran a couple of uh, surveys uh, last year. One for staff. It was possibly the shortest survey we've ever sent out to staff, and they were quite uh, pleased that we did so. It just has two questions, one of which is, what digital skills do you expect your students to have when they arrive and start your programme? And the second question is, on what digital skills do they seem to routinely lack? And that was it. And if they wanted to provide their name, that was great. Uh, it wasn't obligatory. Um, and we targeted uh, a number of staff. So we had um, 17 colleagues uh, give us responses back, which doesn't sound loads, but actually that was kind of more than enough because we were coming back with very similar um, results. Then we did a student survey. Um, we opened it up to first years across the consortium. Uh, we asked them four questions. What digital skills did you have when you arrived at university? 
What did you need that you didn't have, that you realized you didn't have? How did you acquire these skills? What did you do to, to get them? And what advice would you give any first years coming in based on what you've, you've uh, um, found out? So we had 63 students respond to that. Again, not loads, not significantly uh, remarkable, but plenty for us to, to get working on. So we collated all of the results that we got from all of our students, and based on the data, we started to identify the areas of this pre-enrollment course that we knew that we would need to cover. So this is like the, the spreadsheet taken from collating all our data. So we started realizing that all of the teaching staff, you know, for example, 11 teaching staff said they needed something on Microsoft Word, working in um, uh, uh, documents like that. Um, that cloud storage didn't come up at all. We thought it would. We grayed it out because only one person thought it would be significantly important. Not to say we didn't include it, but this really got us going to start thinking about how to design and shape the course. Um, at the same time as collecting our data and finding out what our stakeholders wanted, uh, we scoped out what resources already existed internally. So we looked at all of our six institutional partners, VLEs, we got access to the sort of digital skills courses that they already offered, uh, making sure that obviously the resources there were openly available. Um, and then we went external, so we asked um, sort of local friends if they had anything in the open that we would be able to use in this course. Now, it's important at this stage to, to realize that our course was an overview of the kind of digital things that a student would, would come across once they started their academic uh, career uh, programs. Um, we weren't going to be learning anything per se. We weren't going to be teaching how to create a video, but it was more of a kind of a heads up, this is what you're going to be faced with when you start your program, whether it was undergraduate, postgraduate, distance learning, or what. We wanted to make this as inclusive as possible. Our mantra of the whole course was so that there'd be no surprises when you went through those uh, classroom gates. Uh, so, Based on all of the research that we collected, we were able to refine and decide on the four main areas of our course. So, sort of topic zero is what is digital skills? What are digital skills? What do we mean by this? Um, section one is about uh, general technologies. So, working with files, understanding fo what file types mean. It's important that students understand that they need to save uh, documents into PDF if they want to be, uh, they're going to be using Turnitin. Um, office applications, search engines, those kind of things. The learning technology section is around things like the VLE, forums in the VLE, uh, assignments and assessments, and the use of video, lecture capture. We wanted to tell our students before they got into the classroom that a lot of their stuff would actually be filmed and they can think about how they'll, they'll use that recording. Um, for many of our students, we're anticipating it will be the first time they'll ever have used a VLE, certainly Moodle in, in an HE setting. So if nothing else, this course will give them a taste for that. The third option is all around safety, security and access, logging in. Some of our students, um, I've heard colloquially, come to the help desk because they can't get into to Moodle. I've logged onto my laptop and I can't access Moodle, I don't understand why. Well, you have to log in to various different university systems. There are lots of usernames and passwords involved um, when you're at university. Um, and the final section is about getting organized. So that's uh, online note taking, annotating, um, understanding referencing, time management. Um, so this is another spreadsheet that we designed to start really honing in and, and really we use this as the course map to, to, to structure the course. Um, and if the link works, we can go into it more fully. So you, it's all there. So all these different set colors refer to a different topic section. Oops. Uh, and in terms of how we managed the project, there was myself and my colleague Nancy, who hopefully is tuning in live at the moment, and we used Google Drive to store all of our shared documentation. We worked disparately across six different institutions, and our small working group, we wanted to ensure they had access to everything as we went along. Uh, we used uh, Blackboard to collaborate quite often. Again, although we're located all in London, uh, Nancy, for example, lives in Dorset, so we needed to make sure we all got together virtually. So that's just a snippet of a Blackboard collaborate session we ran as Nancy was starting to um, start structuring the course to show the working group where she was at. Um, Nancy really is truly the architect and the, the key designer behind the course. 
Um, so let's have a look at the actual course. Uh, so we use Moodle. Our course is, is a generic course. Um, it sits in our sort of shared version of Moodle. Um, and there you go, that's the, sort of the, the landing page with a bit of information, a very short introduction. That is section zero. What is this course? If we click into the learning technologies section, it takes you to that. And there are only about, I think it's four sections in this course on learning technologies. We don't want to overwhelm these students. Potentially, they might be sitting on a beach in Ibiza. They haven't yet started their courses. So we don't want to stress them out before they even start. But it's just to give them that taste of flavor, a heads up of what's to come. So you can see in the um, uh, learning technology section, we've got a bit about an online learning environment, the forums, the assessments, assignments, and the video that you will be using or having access to video recordings. And at the end of each section, we've got a quiz. Uh, students are expected to get 100% in this quiz of very four or five very simple questions. They can keep retaking it and retaking it until they get the 100%, and then they get a badge at, at the end. So it's all kind of subtly demonstrating what it will be like to do an online course. Um, and then that is, if I click, in, click into the assignments and assessments section, that is about the size of a page that we have on each, each topic. There's no scrolling. There might be a video. We've, we've um, taken a lot of University of Derby's brilliant animation and videos about digital capabilities. There might just be a still image, something to make it look nice. And right at the very bottom of this page um, is a quote which we've pinched. We didn't have to make any quotes up, which was brilliant. We, we were considering it. Um, but we got enough of those quotes from those students in that fourth question, what advice would you give incoming students? So right now, literally at this very moment, we're running our pilots. So out of the six institutions I work for, three institutions are now piloting the course. So they've taken a copy of um, the pre-enrollment course from our shared Moodle and dropped it into their own. So that is the Royal Veterinary College's version of the course. That is Birkbeck's. And that is SOAS's. So you can see it's the same course in different Moodles. And right now, they're piloting. So right at the very end of the course, we've embedded a survey, um, which I haven't looked today, but we've already got at least two or three responses from. This is a very quick survey to ask them what did they think of the course. So I found this course, and they've put in a load of different adjectives for them to describe, too much information, boring, uh, confusing, but we've put, put in some positives mixed in there as well. We don't want to force anyone one way or the other. Um, we asked them which bits they liked the best, and um, they can tick uh, all of those, um, how difficult or easy they found their way to navigate through the course, and a bit about them so we know which level of study they're in, uh, which institution, and their age range, and how they were accessing the course. So, as I said, we've already had at least response, and one of them says, I am useless with computers, so the basic guidance which, which assumed no knowledge was useful. So, that was good going from our second uh, response, respondent to the survey. Um, and then once we have, um, you know, as the focus groups, uh, sorry, as the survey, uh, huh, as the pilots uh, progress, we'll collect some focus groups based on students who are happy for us to contact them afterwards. So what next? We're planning a full rollout 2019, so possible another presentation at Altsy next year. Um, and our plan is to open up the course to everyone, to the world. You couldn't see it earlier, but there is a Creative Commons license already attached to the course, so it's openly, it will be properly openly available. But if anybody would like to take a sneaky peek at it and have a look at it now, I would be very happy to, to let you in. So just uh, grab me at the end or um, t uh, drop me a line. Um, and that's it. So um, I think we, we came up with a really clever metaphor for this uh, presentation, which is something about unlocking the stable door. So I think it's around ensuring our students, we might be checking they've got digital capabilities for the workplace, but actually, let's just unlock the door, give them those digital capabilities now, um, and then they're free to, to leave the stable. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Sarah. And just so, fantastic. So... You've taken your, my advice and you've asked lots of questions, so I don't have to. Oh, so, God. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of my glasses on. Oh, yeah, I can't read that. Right, first of all, then, is there a difference between digital skills and digital fluency that is investigated in your data? It's a good question. 
Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to answer it fully, but I'll do the politician thing. So um, I think there is a really fuzzy line between digital skills generally, so understanding the software um, and, you know, if we talk about note-taking, for example, understanding, you know, the different Evernote and Google Docs and what there is. And I think there's a difference between knowing that and applying those, so how to actually take annotations and, and notes pedagogically for, for informing learning. That's not what we're doing in this course. It's not so much study skills as technology. So these are the tech tools or platforms that you'll be coming across um, when you're at university. So thank you. I hope that answers whoever else Email me if you want to chat more. Yeah, please do talk to Sarah afterwards. Right, second one, quickly. Do you already use Google tools for learning? For example, Gmail, Drive, Docs, yeah, so some of, the, some of our institutions do. Obviously, we're six independent, uh, separate institutions. SOAS, for example, is fully Googled. They got Google Apps for Education, gosh, I don't know, seven years ago, whenever it came out. So staff and students at SOAS are using uh, Gmail and Drive for everything. At Birkbeck, it's just for Gmail, um, and then other institutions can, can use it if they want to use it. So there's no hard and fast rule. Brilliant, thank you. Then thirdly... What's the level and qual quality of engagement with the course? Well, I don't know yet. Uh, we literally, because it's a pre-enrolment course, um, it's happening right now, um, we've let uh, students loose on it. So the three pilots that we've got running, for example, at the Royal Veterinary College, where I took lots of these photos of probably quite ill horses, but yeah, hopefully yeah, they're all on the mend. Um, the RVC is, is piloting it with one uh, BSc course, so it's a full cohort in the first years. They haven't yet started. So the moment the IT sets up their accounts, they'll be in. Um, Birkbeck, we think we've got a number of um, courses. We've got some nods for some academics who are running those. Uh, and at SOAS, we've got um, some what they call bridging students. So they're international students, and they come over a couple of weeks before term starts to kind of get orientated, do a bit of language stuff, and this course will support yeah. them. So, so I don't know, ask me again in three months. We'll okay. see how we go. Take her email address. <laughs> Thank you. Right, so do you have a minimum standards for blue use star? Minimum standards for uh, the BLE? Uh, I think blue. B BLE. Right, minimum standards. Use of staff for, so students can be sure they will get what they have learned. I'm not sure if I understand the question, but what That's I can right, say is, I guess with all the consultation and study, and we approach lots of academics, I think Liz, you were probably one of the ones who filled in the survey for us, um, we made sure that all the institutions could be, provide, could be covered, so what their needs and requirements were, so that the course would be met. But there isn't anything formal as a, uh, a minimum standard. Certainly the institutions don't all have the minimum standards for the BLE, but I don't know if that was the question. You want? So, yeah, one of the things to bear in mind is that we customised things for yes. So the group created the group came. Yep. Thank you. <laughs> the group um, created the course, and when it was handed over, we've actually gone in and customised it. So the links to all of the support materials, all of the contact details of the host institution. So with regard to that, if they need additional support in the resources section. Thank you so much, Elizabeth, for, for reminding me that. And Elizabeth spent about an hour personalising the Birkbeck version of the course. So we provided guidance to our piloting and anyone else um, which bit needed personalising. And I think in the actual template course, those bits are highlighted in red so people know what they need to change to make it fit for their institution. I did just disclose you to me that put a question. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Uh, I, I put BLE because you referred to it as blue and Yes. Yeah. Yes. Oh. It's kind of a bit of an age old question. You know, we have these um, these ideas at our institution. Should it be a minimum standard that lecturers put all their lecture captures up there? Can students expect when they come to the institution, I will see all my lecture captures, I will see all my yeah. PowerPoints, I will see a picture of my lecturer? And that, that's kind of what I was trying to ask Got in it. terms of yes. the course design actually on the Sorry. Course page. So actually, I think, sorry, thank you, Elizabeth, I think answered that, so that each institution will have a different take on it. So from my point of view, I've done the generic template course, and then it's up to the institution how they want to localise that. If they want to get rid of that whole section on lecture capture, it would be a shame, because we, we worked hard on it, but, you know, they can do that. Okay, thank you. 
Okay, thank you. Then, uh, lastly, for our next presenter, you asked students for their age. Was this mm. relevant? I don't know yet. I think, I mean, probably not, but let's find out. Okay, right. Well, if we'd like to show your appreciation in the normal way. <laughs>